Well, I can truthfully say that it was with genuine pleasure that I accepted Professor's Mac Professor McMahon's invitation to deliver the opening remarks to tonight's lecture for two reasons. The first <coughs> is that as a student of law in UCD, in 1968, and I hate mentioning that, needless to say, <laughs> that far back, um, I had the good fortune to be lectured by the late Professor Kelly, um, whom we're remembering tonight, um, and he lectured in jurisprudence at that stage. Um, I have quite a good uh, recolle recollection of his lectures. I remember Savigny featuring, but um, I have a clear recollection that at that time the Hart Devlin debate was, if I may put it this way, flavour of the month. Um, more importantly, from my days as a law student, I remember Professor Kelly for the fact that there was a textbook on Irish constitutional law, which was quite extraordinary at the time. That, as some of you will remember, was <coughs> Fundamental Rights in Irish Law and Constitution, of which he was the author, and which ultimately led to what is now Kelly on the Constitution, and uh, which was first, first came out in 1980. Um, at the time, there were very few textbooks on Irish law, which brings me to my second reason. Our speaker tonight, Professor John Wiley, has made an unparalleled contribution to the knowledge and understanding of the law of real property, landlord and tenant law, and conveyancing of those learning, teaching, practicing and adjudicating on the law in those areas because of the range of textbooks, uh, commentaries and annotations authored by him which have been published over the last 40 years. But even more significantly, he has been undeniably the most important contributor to the reform of Irish land law and conveyancing law. And I'm going to put it this way, for all time. To put his contribution in context, it is worth recalling that while there were some reforms in the 19th century and in the early 20th century to our land law, um, there was the Compensing Act 1881, for instance, the major reforms in the United Kingdom, the Birkenhead legislation in 1925, was enacted after independence, and effectively we missed out on it, if I may put it that way. So the position at the beginning of the 21st century was that our land law was still governed by statutes dating back to the 13th century. And a lot of you in this room will remember the application um, of De Donis Conditionalibus 1285, Quia in Torres 1290. Our law was governed by a range of pre-union statutes um, dating back to the 17th, pre-Union pre Irish statutes, dating back to the 17th and the 8th, 18th centuries. Um, and I'm going to mention just two examples that uh, we, we, we all knew and applied over the years. Uh, the Statute of Uses 1634 and the Statute of Fraud 1695. Isn't it absolutely incredible that up to 2009, our law was based on statutes um, dating, going back 800 years, or almost 800 years. Professor Wiley's contribution to the reform of land law and conveyancing law flows from his involvement in a joint project undertaken by the Department of Justice, and I'm trun truncating the name of the department at this stage, and the Law Reform Commission in 2004. In February 2004, he was appointed the legal researcher responsible for carrying out the first phase of the project, which resulted in a consultation paper published by the Law Reform Commission in October 2004, entitled Reform and Modernisation of Land Law and Conveyancing Law. Following a consultation phase, the project culminated in the publication of the Law Reform Commission by the Law Reform Commission of a further report entitled uh, Reform and Moder Modernization of Land Law and Conveyancing Law. And that was published in 2005. And it's quite a, 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 a substantial tome. I took it down from the shelf today and felt it quite heavy. Um, but um, it, it can, it, the, that report 
contained the draft for the legislation that ultimately was enacted. And um, as you know, um, the, this whole project resulted in um, the reforming legislation we have now, which is the Land and Conveyancing Law Reform Act 2009, which was ultimately commenced on the uh, 1st of December 2009. The Act of 2009 gave effect to a comprehensive reform and modernisation of our land law and conveyancing law for which Professor Wiley is primarily to be thanked. Professor Wiley's involvement with the law of this jurisdiction predates his involvement with the reform project by at least three decades. Um, 1975 saw the publication of his first edition of Irish Land Law, which covered the law in this jurisdiction and also the law in Northern Ireland. Prior to its publication, there had been no text or commentary which comprehensively covered land law in this jurisdiction. As I've said on previous occasions, um, it gained the status of Bible um, among practitioners in this jurisdiction very soon after it was published. Now, since 1975, Professor Wiley has given us, and I'll keep the list as short as possible, four more editions of Irish Land Law, the most recent two in 2010 and 2013, covering the Act of 2009, um, which is, is, is invaluable for the end users, people like me. Um, th then there, we have three editions of Irish Conveyancing Law, the first having been published in 1978 and the most recent in 2005. Three editions of Landlord and Tenant Law, the first edition, which became the seminal work on the topic, was written in conjunction with the late John Farrell Senior Counsel and was published in 1990. Um, we are now fortunate to have the benefit of the third edition, which was published in 2014. Going back a little bit, um, there were case books which were particularly useful for students. For example, a case book on Irish land law published in 1984 and a case book on equity and trusts published um, in 1985. And most recently, its most recent publication, Irish Landlord and Tenant Acts, Annotations, Commentary and Precedents, which was published in 2015, and uh, for practitioners is very, very useful. Textbook, textbooks, commentaries, annotations and precedents are the tools of the trade of the legal practitioners, as well as those administering, adjudicating on, and enforcing the law in this particular area. Without Professor Wiley's publications, life would be a lot harder for those involved in the area of land law, conveyancing, landlord and tenant law, and trusts. And of course, of particular um, significance is uh, what uh, Professor McMahon referred to the conveyancing precedents, uh, which he has edited for I think 20 years. Um, and um, I've said this on a previous occasion his name should be on the spine, not mine, in, in truth. Turning to the topic of tonight's lecture adverse possession, still an ailing concept? Question mark. Um, during my 24 years practicing as a bar barrister involved in land law and conveyancing and chancery, which was really a night, noon and morning operation, I came to the conclusion that there were two fundamental rules which one had always to bear in mind. The first, nemo dat quad non habit, you can't give what you haven't got. And secondly, if I may put it this way, possession is nine points of the law. I'm looking forward to hearing the extent to which the second rule still survives.